the United States, and um, one of them is illegal immigration. And I think, like, for the most part, we've all come to the consensus that deporting these people is something that's not going to happen. It's a waste of money. But um, this alternative of the DREAM Act, that's also a waste of money because, you know, throwing money at someone in the hopes that they're going to change their act and go to school and become something, it doesn't really work. <coughs> uh, and right now, we're not in a position where we can be giving, a mo giving money away to people for education, especially non-citizens. And uh, that's why I'm going to argue in the speech that you shouldn't support the DREAM Act. And uh, I have three points that I want to make. There's, it's not going to benefit the economy. It's, um, it's not going to be yeah, benefit the economy. There's an alternative to it that will benefit the economy. And also, um, there's a military option, which also gets a lot of, like, people fight about it because, oh, it's, I'll tell you about it later. All right, so first, the economy. Um, Stephen A. Camarota, he's got a Ph.D. in immigration studies. This is what he does for a living at the Immigration Center. Uh, he gives a conservative estimate that there are 1.3 million illegal immigrants in the United States that are, that are of age and meet the other requirements to get DREAM Act benefits. And uh, I'll go into the benefits later, but um, if the DREAM Act passes, they're all going to get $6,000 in financial aid, so $6,000 per every student. So it's like $6.2 billion out of your pocket every year for non-citizen students. You know, how's that going to benefit the economy? When you don't have money to spend, it can't be taxed. It doesn't work. It doesn't benefit the economy. It's all just a hope that they're going to grow up to be something important. Um, so there's that. That's in addition. Well, that doesn't include the other forms of financial aid that they'll be getting, that they can be getting. Um, so there's that. And uh, when I say they're eligible for DREAM Act benefits, it's not just like they don't have to have good grades. There's, they have to be under the age of 14 when they come to the United States. They have to be here for five years, and they have to have graduated college, high school and, or have a GED and also be in good legal standing, which is easy to defraud when, when there's no record of you. So still not going to benefit the economy. Um, there's an alternative to the DREAM Act that um, the Senator of Florida is making. It's, just, it's called the DREAM Act, just a revised version, and um, it works out way better because it's stricter. Not so many people are going to get the benefits all at once that the DREAM Act, as it is right now, will give them. Um, what the revised ver version of the DREAM Act does is that it allows them to have a temporary citizenship, and uh, during that temporary citizenship, they can they have to pay taxes, so they're giving back while they're getting some of the benefits. They don't get all of the benefits at once, they just get some of them. And uh, that's better because all at once, that's a big lump sum that we're missing. So, yeah, they get the benefits. And um, it gives them a pathway to citizenship. So, they get their citizenship and they can go to college. But um, in order to go through the college option, they have to be really good students. They don't just have to have good, have graduated high school. Um, ideally, only the best of the best students, so like the valedictorians, the honor roll students, and even some of the talented like artists and musicians, they would be the ones eligible for these stream activities. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that one. Oh yeah, wait, and then um, afterwards, like once they finish going to college, they can stay in there and um, they can get their full citizenship where they get all the benefits that we would receive. So it's all, it trickles down, it's not so much like, here you go, it's, oh here you go, oh here's some more. So, works out a little better. And then, um, the military <coughs> option, that was another part that, I'm not a big fan of that option, but um, it's out there. But for the students that don't receive good grades in high school, they haven't proven themselves yet, so why would you give them money, you know, in the hopes that, oh, hey, they slack off in high school, maybe they'll do better in college. But not like that. Um, the military option, it, uh, the military option, um, for the students, the average students, so like the C students, and um, a lot of people say, oh, it's just a way to get more soldiers so that we can fight our wars, foreigners are going to fight our wars, and stuff like that, but um, really it works out for the greater good of them and for us, it uh, bolsters our defenses, or our, our, our units, so, you know, they're risking our lives, yeah, it's true, but um, 
it's offering them a pathway to citizenship. And not every military job is a combat job. There's like my dad was in the Marine Corps, he was in aeronautics, so afterwards he got a job working with Toshiba. He never fought anyone, he just fixed things and worked with computers. So not every job is a combat job. They're not all gonna be risking their life. They're gonna be in the Marines or the military I mean, but they're gonna get citizenship and experience, so it'll qualify them for other jobs. <coughs> So there's that, and uh, again, like I said, they, they haven't proven themselves in high school, so it's unfortunate, but they're going to have to take extra steps to get to where they want to go. That's how it is with anything. If you don't do what you do, if you don't perform early, you're going to have to take some extra steps to get to where you want to go. That should be a new idea to anyone, and you know, the, the fact that the military option is argued about is a little strange, because our own people do that. When we can't go to college, we go to the military oftentimes, you know, that's what we do. It's another option. But um yeah, so I'm just hoping that like you reconsider your idea for the Dream Act or your your position on the Dream Act because you know you do have your ties to your family and um whatever wherever you're from, but you're American citizens first, those of you that are able to vote. And it's unfortunate, but you know, the nicest idea, which the Dream Act is a nice idea, isn't always the best idea. So I'm just hoping that you're going to reconsider your stance on this and vote against it or vote for a revised version, which is being made and talked about. So in my speech, I've told you about the Dream Act, like why it won't help the economy, um, an alternative solution to it, and the military option, why that's a good idea too. So thank you.